Check one, two. Testing one, two, one, two. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. All right. Hey, welcome to the stream. My name is Patrick, and today is a special stream in that um, I am going to be doing an unboxing to start the stream, and then we're going to do some retro gaming afterwards. Um, today is a, a, a special day, or at least a couple days ago was a special day, in that I received the uh, Shroud of the Avatar boxed collector's edition. I was um, one of the early people who contributed to their Kickstarter campaign. Um, for those of you not familiar with this, um, Shroud of the Avatar is the latest game from Lord British. And if you have any background in, uh, in, in gaming uh, that, that goes back to the classic games, uh, he is the inventor or the, the, the creative force behind the Ultima games. His first game, I think, was called Acalabeth. Uh, but he did Ultima 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then Ultima Online in 1997 was a huge, huge hit. Uh, and it was the first, like, really successful MMORPG. Um, and uh, it, I was there on day one as well. Uh, I just remember some of my best memories of Ultima Online, by the way, were um, they'd let you kill other players, right? This was a, a thing. And so people would just camp outside of the, the towns and wait for, you know, because the towns were sort of a safe zone. You couldn't kill anybody in a town. But as soon as you left the town, you're out in the wilderness and it's anything goes. And, uh, you know, it was fun because people would just, you know, respawn in town and then go booking out the, the, the front door <laughs> and uh, trying to make a run for it while everyone's throwing lightning bolts and, you know, swinging axes at them and stuff like that. And it just became a, a you know, wave after wave of, of death and destruction. And, of course, once you died, they could steal all your stuff. Um, so it was fun for me because I would try to like hide behind trees and get away from them and, and sneak around and stuff like that. But that was that was a lot of fun. Then they kind of took away some of the player killing things and made it like both players had to agree to a duel or whatever. Kind of nerfed it a bit. Uh, I liked the the old Wild West as aspects of it. But anyway, let's get on with this um, this uh, unboxing here. So I'll give you an idea of the. This is the latest game. So he did a Kickstarter campaign, started back in, I think, like 2013 or 2014, raising money for this game. And uh, I was like, well, it's Lord British, man. He's going to have a game in the spirit of Ultima. You know, he doesn't own the Ultima brand anymore. Uh, that's, I think, owned by Electronic Arts, I want to say. I think Electronic Arts. But this is a game in the spirit of Ultima. So, you know, still from the same creative mind that gave us Ultima. And then here's the back. You know, it's got... Some screenshots and, and what have you um, but this is a, an online game uh, multiplayer and uh, you know if you've seen Ultima online you know the graphics today look kind of dated and everything but it, back in the day it was a big deal right well this is an online Ultima spirited game we could say and uh, let me just get the, the shrink wrap off of it here and uh, if you've ever purchased an Ultima game before, the boxed version of an Ultima game, you know that it comes with a lot of cool goodies and stuff inside. It's not just here's your you know, CD or whatever, install this and, and all the good stuff's in the game. He puts a lot of effort into physical stuff going into these games. And so let's unbox and see what we have here. I'm going to take the lid off. I've, not, I've intentionally not watched any other unboxing videos, so here we go. All right, first thing you see, this is the, the sign of quality. First thing you see is a cloth map. This is not a paper, cheapo paper map. This is a cloth map. I'm going to pull it out. Oh, it's nice and smooth, too. It's silky. It's not even cheap cloth. It's nice cloth. It's it kind of embroidered around the edge, or at least, you know, has a an edge to, that it won't get frayed. But look at this bad boy. Let me get, get this up to the camera. Look at that. And you'll see that it's got all these runes in there. I hope he provides the uh, the translation thing for the runes. Um, but yeah, check this out. This is pretty badass. That's the only bit of English on there, Shroud of the Avatar. But everything else you got to kind of translate to figure out where you are. So I'm hoping there's a, a legend on here somewhere that we can uh, check that out. 
let me, I say that my counter is tweaked on the thing here. Let me fix that. It looks a little weird. Give me a second here. It'll get that fixed. Go in here. Unlock that. There. Let's do that. Let's move that over like so. Okay. There. All right. Now, let's resume our, our unboxing. So I pulled out the, the cloth map. This is the next thing I see, which I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a... It feels like a card, so maybe this is the uh, the commands. You know, they always give you a card with the shortcuts to all the different commands. Let's see if that's what that is. Yes, it is. Okay, quick reference card. So here you go. And this tells you all the keys and stuff that you use to do, do the various functions in the game. Um, it's just down at the bottom. Conversation window chat commands, common NPC chat keywords. So when you talk to people... Um, you know, in the in the game, there's certain little keywords that uh, it'll tell you, like, oh, this guy can talk to you about farming or something, and you say farming in the chat, and it starts a story, you know, a, a conversation with an NPC. So, yeah, that's good to have all on one page, too, so you don't have to flip through multiple pages. I don't know what this is. This will be something I have to translate. Not quite sure. We'll check that out. Okay, so that's the quick reference card along with my cloth map, the next thing I see in here is a book, Our Epic Origin. And that looks like the cover of Ultima 3, if I'm not mistaken. Looks very much like the cover of Ultima 3. A blast from the past. All right? Our Epic Origin. So this must be... Uh, well, here's a note on the back from Lord British, so I'll read that later. Um, but I guess this is just kind of the... Yeah, so here, as I mentioned, he did... A game, gosh, this is great. Oh, this is so cool. This must be his original Dungeons and Dragons character that he made when he was playing Dungeons and Dragons back in the day. And I pulled that out and put it on here. That's a really cool bit of history right there. I think that's that's pretty rad. And then it talks about the different games. A Calabeth was his first game. Add the inspiration for Home Yeah, oh God, this is great. These are his sketches. So he pulled all this stuff out of his his home archives. Now, I was 10, no, I was like 12 years old or something like that. Um, I think like 12 years old when I got my first Apple II Plus computer. I'd asked for an Atari 2600 for my birthday. My dad, in his infinite wisdom, said, I'm not going to get you a damn game console. I'm going to get you a computer. You'll learn stuff. And I was all bummed when I got it because all my friends had Ataris and stuff. And then it's like, oh, whoa. This thing has, A, better games, and B, I can make games on it. And fast forward to ninth grade when I won the science fair by making a game using uh, Broderbund's arcade uh, construction kit. Like, check this out. These are all his notes. I'm going to enjoy going through this. And it's just a, a whole booklet full of it. I love it. Uh, what is this? It's just sketches and, and funky things that uh, came from Lord British himself. That's pretty rad. I love this. I love this. He's just got... You know, I'm not going to read all these on stream, but uh, this is worth the price of the, the game alone, this thing right here. That's, that's a, a chunk of history right there that I'm going to really enjoy digging into. All right, next thing in the box is... the RTFM. <laughs> the manual. Adventurer's Manual. Here we go. All right, and this must be, yeah, this is just going to be telling me, uh, well, okay, a little bit of history, history of what came before. I'm sure this is the in-game history. Yeah, it's talking about why the, when you look up in the sky, you'll see that the planet are, is split in half or something like that, and there's debris in the sky or what have you. Okay, so this is good. Where you can, where you'll travel, what you'll expect along the way. Nicely illustrated. And, uh, yeah, it talks about the user interface and whatnot. So this will just tell you, you know, how the, how the game is played and how to get around here, acquiring gear, inventory management, encumbrance. My favorite thing in a game is encumbrance. But, uh, you know, I guess you can't carry 400 axes on you at all times. You have to put something down at some point. All right, let's see. Ooh, okay, here we go. Now, remember these? CDs. <laughs> uh, so this is the installer and a soundtrack. Let's take that out and take a look. Oh, look at that DVD-ROM. 
I have to actually plug in a DVD player to my laptop. I, my MacBook doesn't have a DVD <laughs> thing on it. So I'm going to plug that in and um, uh, have to install it from that. Unless you just can go online, you might be able to just go online and download the latest build from that. I've already got an account, so I could probably go ahead and just get it there. All right, what's next? Oh, here we go. See, again, the, the physical stuff in these boxes is amazing. So here's a, a coin, Shroud of the Avatar coin. Let's see if I can get that without a, a glare. Actually, I can get it without a glare by taking it out of the package. I'm one of those people that doesn't leave stuff in the package because, you know, it's not going to be worth as much or whatever. It's like, I'm not selling this. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I'm keeping this. I still have the box for um, Ultima 2 with its cloth map and Ultima 3 with its cloth map. So it's like, yeah, I'm not getting rid of that stuff. That's that's mine. <laughs> now if I can just get it out of that package. Yeah, this is a real, a real coin. If I can get it out of the turn. Okay. Just like a ketchup package. <laughs> there we go. Oh, gosh. More games need to do collector's editions that are like this. I miss the stuff that used to come with games. Absolutely, Jacob. Look at this. This is a real coin. Listen. Yeah. Dang, dang, dang. I'm hitting this, this on the table, and it's nice and embossed. You know, this is really nice. I, I mean, the last time I got a coin with a game, I think it was... Um, Elder Scrolls Oblivion uh, for the Xbox 360. It came with uh, one of the, the coins there, and I thought it was a great idea. And it was just, you know, because that's what you're chasing around the entire game anyway, is trying to get gold and septums, I think they called it. But this is, uh, let's see. Oh, it's got the, the runes on it again, so I am going to have to translate whatever this says. Maybe it says what kind of currency it is. Let's see. Nope. Probably just says something about. Uh, you know, a phrase or something like that, and then Lord British. But, um, yeah, check that out. And then on the back, Founder's Edition. That's me. I was one of the first people to... When I first heard about this, I just, you know, please take my money. <laughs> I loved Oblivion, one of my all-time favorite games. Yeah, I, I liked it, too. I didn't get all the way through it. Um, and I do have it now downloaded. Uh, it's um, uh, backwards compatible now on Xbox One, and it looks great on the Xbox One X, I should say. I did jump back in and start playing it, but I didn't have my saved game from the 360 days of playing it, so I had to kind of start all over from scratch, but I haven't really... It's one of those things, that, as you know, it's a time suck. <laughs> it's just going to be like, oh, God, do I spend 400 hours playing this? I mean, I I lost my entire life to Skyrim <laughs> for about five months just playing nonstop. I went through, I went through Skyrim top to tail. <laughs> I, mean, I did every dungeon, killed everything. How's that for on-stream excellence there? Knew about it when it was the crowdfunding campaign probably would have done the same yeah i mean i don't know i think i just heard about it because somebody uh tweeted it or something like that and i follow lord british on the uh on the um on the interwebs <laughs> on the on the twitter sphere uh so i probably saw him tweet about it saying hey you got a new thing going on and checked it out and they did some live streams and stuff they've been they've been doing a lot of stuff uh, social media and live streaming through the creation of the game which is kind of neat so you get to see stuff in progress and they just you know they're, they're like the kind of game developers that don't mind if you see the work in progress. You know, they'll pull stuff up on screen going, what do you think of this? And people will chat and say, make, it, make his head bigger or make a tail longer or whatever. All right, now this is like the Ankh, I think is what it's called. And it's also metal. Metal. Um, but uh, it's got a little loop on the top, so I could actually put a chain in this thing or a string or whatever and make a little necklace or something be nice if I could modify this and make a tie pin or you know a lapel pin out of it that would be kind of cool I only started playing you know, Ultima recently but yeah I love the way Lord British developed stuff yeah and it's just a wide open and he'll pull in it's not just Richard Garriott he'll pull in the entire team and uh, if you watch their twitch streams it's really interesting because uh, you know they'll, they'll do fundraising and stuff on the twitch stream and they have all their stretch goals on there. So it's like if they raise $1,000, this goes in the game. They raise $5,000, this goes in the game. And uh, it's really cool watching them meet those goals and checking them off. You know, okay, we're going to get, you know, a, a free pet, you know, for everybody in the game, that kind of thing. All right, let's see what we got here. If there's anything else in this box. Nope, we've reached the bottom of the box. All right, so let's recap what we got in here. And there's the back of the box again. A lot of stuff to read. <laughs> Lots of text. 
Uh, so let's recap. I did not get what I thought I would get, which was the um, uh, sort of the guide to the runes here. So I'm going to have to do what I did for all the other Ultima games and write them all down and try to figure out what the words are. And, uh, and oh, no, it is. Gosh, this is why I have to have my glasses on. There it is. <laughs> the, uh, you know, you can frame grab that. <laughs> and uh, that's our, our rune to English translation there. Okay, I'm, I'm blind. Rosetta Stone. <laughs> there you go. So that's the, uh, the quick reference card. That'll be handy when I'm playing the game. The, um, we got the coin and the onk in the game here. Metal. And we got a quaint CD DVD-ROM that I'm going to have to figure out where my DVD-ROM player is. I've got a, a, a writer burner thing that plugs in us using USB. Uh, we got the Adventurer's Manual, which tells you all about the game. And we got, this is probably my favorite piece in this whole thing, is the, uh, the, the backstory of Lord British and all of his notes that he scanned in. This was a total surprise. I had no idea, no idea they were going to stick something like that in the, in the box. That's worth price of admission right there, let me tell you. And then finally, a cloth map. Very nice cloth map. It's very smooth. It feels like a silk handkerchief. That's how nicely made this thing is. It's bright colors. It can, doesn't really come up on my camera as, as nice. As, the colors really pop on it. Um, my camera doesn't have colors that pop. You can download the installer from your account page. Okay, that's what I was hoping. I need to get a new distress so I can actually play. <laughs> it's making me want to play it. I know. I can't wait to get into it. Uh, this is going to be really fun, and I'm not going to do it on stream today. Actually, I was going to start with the unboxing of this thing, and then, in the spirit of Lord British, I was going to do some um, streaming of retro Apple II games. I've got the uh, Internet Archive up here, and I was going to stream them and uh, see. Some of them don't work. I've been playing around with it for a few hours. Some of them don't work uh, as far as, like, you know, they say I put in disk two, and it's like, well, it's an emulator. There is no disk two. Uh, so you can't get too far in some of them. But others, uh, like Frogger and stuff like that, you can actually play. So I was going to give that a try and see which games I can play, see if I can find Ultima even. Uh, it's free trial. Well, I, I think it, since I bought it, I, I don't need the free trial. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, uh, you know, just keep playing, I guess. I don't think... I don't know if they wiped the characters when the game launched. This is the official launch version of the game, but I had a, t a character on their test servers, I guess, uh, that I was using, and um, maybe I'll have to start a new character anyway, just on principle, because I, I haven't played the, the test game in a while, but we'll try it out. It was, it's a gorgeous-looking game, by the way. Um, it makes, makes my Mac sweat, <laughs> because it's, uh, you know, it requires a pretty powerful processor and stuff like that to really look as good as it, it can look. I, I dial the settings back a bit and, and play that way. Um, signed up for an account. Haven't had the chance to play it. Don't have any more space on my current hard drive. <laughs> yeah, well, there's you can find hard drives for sale cheap now. I mean, even external ones, four terabyte external ones for under 100 bucks I saw last week. So, yeah, to try that out. See what, uh, what you can get. Um, all right, so I'm going to change the title of the stream and uh, sort of reset some things and uh, get my Apple II emulator thing going. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the Shroud of the Avatar unboxing. Give me a few minutes here and I will uh, set up and sort of reset things. Uh, be your next major expenditure. Yeah, you know, it sucks when you run out of hard hard drive space. You know, that's that's the worst, and it's like I can't do anything, and you know, you have to start on un uninstalling things, and you know, for me, it's like I just buy external drives and back stuff up to those, and then I back them up to the cloud too, uh, and then I, that way I try to keep my main hard drive as, you know, just for apps, you know, and every, everything else like documents and movie clips and storage and whatever, I try to keep on external drives. All right, yeah, thanks for, for dropping by. Like I said, I'm going to reset here and uh, start playing some Apple II games. Uh, so you'll see the title of the stream change and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, definitely check it out if you feel like uh, going down some retro gaming there. Or otherwise, uh, thanks for visiting, and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, I will be right back. Don't go nowhere.
All right, stand by. We're coming back. Testing, testing. Let's do this here. Okay. All right. There we go. We are back. And we're going to do some retro gaming now. I just tweeted out uh, and changed my stream title, and I hope everything worked. <laughs> But we're going to try some uh, some Apple II games, and uh, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Um, there we go. Like my overlay. <laughs> so we're in the Internet Archive, and this particular uh, collection is the Apple II library of games. And as you can see, there's a ton of games in here. Uh, 2,949 to be exact. We're not going to play all 2,949. Hey, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to be back. Uh, let me turn my Mac sound up too because otherwise you won't be able to hear the game uh, and then we'll turn desktop audio you like my uh, my sexy picture of Steve Jobs down below here <laughs> he's like hey ladies <laughs> look at my porn stash all right let's see what we got here um, so I'm just gonna just I was trying to play some of these games and some of them work and some of them don't so you know we're gonna sort of catch as catch can here and see uh, see what what we can do here so let's try just for grin something simple like Zork the great underground empire uh, right let's do that and you'll see it's getting its metadata and stuff like that and then we'll go full screen once it's loaded and this is just archive.org the internet archive so all this stuff is up there and it's free and you can kinda goof around with it let's see if this one works Fingers crossed. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> oh, I see that my VU meter is pegged. <laughs> Let's mute and come back there. Let's go. Hope that's not terrible feedback going on. Sounds like it is. All right, let's turn desktop audio off. We're playing Zork anyway. All right, let's go full screen. If you can see what I'm seeing. In full screen. All right, here we go. Uh, da -da -da -da, west of house. You're standing in open field. West of White House with a boarded front door. There's a small mailbox here. Open the mailbox. This is how you used to play games. Opening a small mailbox reveals a leaflet. Read... The Reef Leaflet. Welcome to Zork. Game of adventure, danger, and low cunning. In it, you'll explore some of the most amazing territory ever seen by mortals. No computer should be without one. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we go from here to Skyrim. <laughs> so, ever seen by mortals. Oh, boy. All right. Let's uh, uh, go to house. Go to house. It's here. Okay. Beautiful colonial house painted white. It's clear that the owners must have been extremely wealthy. All right. Forest. Wait a second. Let's go back east. East. Oh, shit. I'm lost in the forest. East. East. The mountains are impassable. Okay, south. South. Small clearing. East and west. Let's go west. Behind the house. Small window. Slightly ajar. Okay. Let's open window. All right. Climb inside. Climb in window. You have a theory on how to board a kitchen window, perhaps? <sighs> Go. Oh, come on. There we go. Enter window. See? <laughs> what is this? You're in the kitchen of a white house. Uh, whoops. Hang on. My overlay is messed up again. Step it. Step it, step it, step it. 
I don't know why it did that, but there. Put it right there so we can actually read them. There we go. Okay. What do we got here? Kitchen of a White House. Table seems to have been used recently. Thinking about trying to develop an old school text based game like this just for the fun of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember back in the day, uh, we used to type these in. They, the, the magazines, the computer magazines, would have programs that you would actually have to type in. They didn't ship with disks or anything. And you literally, that's how I you know, taught myself to type. But I would also you know, always invariably leave out a semicolon or not put a space or whatever and it's like syntax error and you go oh, and you have to go in and find the line that it had a mess that messed it up and then fix that and then run it again syntax error line whatever god dang it you go in and, and do all that but you know that teaches you how to debug something right anyway so this is zork let's uh let's check something else out now there is another um text-based game here it's a great lesson. You know, that was that was what we did back in the day. I would spend hours and hours and hours typing something in and then get Lemonade Stand game, you know, with terrible graphics and whatever. But it worked, and I was like, yeah, this is the best. Uh, let's see. They had, um, I thought we had the adventure game here somewhere. I mean, it, it re-shuffled everything. Let's look for adventure. This was the one that started it all. Um... Yeah, this bad boy. So check this out. Soft porn adventure. Oh, yeah, we'll have to try that one out, too. There's there's like 16 strip poker games for the Apple II+. Plus. <laughs> it's like, yes, back in the day of pixelated porn. It's like, I think I can see her butt. <laughs> no. All right, let's see. Launching the emulator. All right, emulator, emulate, activate. But yeah, this this was the computer that I had. Well, I actually had the Apple II Plus with 64K of RAM, whopping 64K of RAM. All right, let's go full screen, see what we got here. Ooh, look at those graphics. Adventure, copyright 1980 by Apple Computer. So they copyrighted it. All right, adapted from the original Don Woods computer fantasy game by Peter Schmuckle and Leonard Barshak. Where are those guys today? Do you like to continue a game previously saved on disk? No. Please wait. Starting new game. Here we go. Let's see what we got. A bit better associates. Okay, here we go. Welcome to adventure. Would you like instructions? Do we want instructions? Uh, sure. Somewhere nearby is Col Colossal Cave, where others have found fortunes and treasure and gold, though it is rumored that some who enter are never seen again. Magic is said to work in the cave. I will be your eyes and hands. Direct me with commands of one or two words. I should warn you that I only look at the first five letters of each word, so you have to enter north, east, as N E to distinguish it from North. Okay. Should you get stuck, type help for some general hints for information on how to end your adventure, etc. Type info. It may take a bit to get used to the program, so have fun and enjoy. Press space. Okay. You're standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a goal. It's very much like the beginning of Zork, isn't it? Um, okay. Uh, Let's see. Before a small brick building. I guess we should go in the building. Enter. Building. You're inside a building. <laughs> a well house for a large spring. There's some keys on the ground here. There's a shiny brass lantern. There's food and a bottle of water. All right, get keys. Okay. Get lantern. Okay. Get food. <laughs> yep. And get water. Okay. Anything else? Oops. Look. Long description for location. Not allowed to give more detail. Not allowed to give more detail. I love that. 
All right, you're inside a building, a well house for a large spring. Okay. Um, fill bottle. Stop. Doesn't like the delete key, apparently. Go out. You're at end of road. <laughs> yes, that's that's how my entire life feels. I'm at the end of the road. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What was the... Uh, let's get a, a bigger description than that. I'll repeat the Okay, standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a gully. Okay, let's go... Let's go north. You're in an open forest with a deep valley to one side. Okay. North. You're in the forest. Yep. North. You're in forest. <laughs> north. You're in an open forest near a valley and a road. Okay. East. You're in a valley in the forest besides a stream tumbling along a rocky bed. Okay. East. You're in for. So you kind of get the get the sense that uh, yeah, you're now in the valley. Well, let's keep going east. Maybe we'll hit the ocean. You're in the forest. East. You're in the valley. <laughs> Okay, so that was a that was an exciting game. Let's try another one. <laughs> let's see. Like I said, it's catch as catch can with the Apple II here. Uh, so let's see what else we got. I might be able to get something more graphically interesting going on here. Um, ooh, there's a Calabeth from Lord British. Let's try that. In the sense of our... Yeah, a Calabeth. Welcome, foolish mortal. Okay. This is Lord British's first game, and since I just unboxed his latest game, this will uh, kind of show you where he started. If we can run it. Sometimes they don't run. <laughs> so be prepared. We might be disappointed. Let's see. I've never played a Calabeth, by, by the way, so we'll see what it's like once it launches. If it launches. There we go. Let's go full screen and see what we got. I tried a Calabeth, got it on GOG for free. I'm going to take some time for me to figure it out. Yeah. Well, let's see. I've never played it, so we'll see what's up. Welcome, foolish mortal, into the world, a Calabeth. Not the world of, just into the world, a Calabeth. Herein thou shalt find grand adventure. Okay. Created by Lord British. Okay. Space to continue. Let's go. I hit the space bar. Ah, here we go. Beware, foolish mortal, you trespass in a Calabeth. World of Doom, Lord British. Doom, that way. Okay. <laughs> Let's go into the Doom. Oh. Monster. Another pretty, for the day, that's a graphically rich monster. All right, wait, we're loading stuff, I think. Hmm. Type thy lucky number. Well... Seven. Level of play, one to ten. Uh, one? Okay, it rolls me. Okay, here we go. Hit points, 22. Strength, 22. Dexterity, 9. Stamina, 14. Wisdom, 22. Gold, 17. Shalt thou play. Shalt thou play with these qualities. Yes. And shalt thou be a fighter or a mage. Well... I think we'll go as a fighter. All right, here we go. Uh, whoa. And we crashed. <laughs> All right, so that's a Calabeth there. I don't think I'm going to complain to Lord British that his game doesn't work on the Internet Archive. Let's go back. Let's see what else we can find here. Let's see, I don't need these headsets anymore either. Let's do that. Ugh. Besides that, they swear. My ears are sweating. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, are we not... There we go. Oops. Let's reload the library here. See what else we can find. That could be interesting. Uh-oh. Have we crashed? No. Okay, here we go. Let's close that. Okay. All right, what do we got here? We got strip poker, Melissa and Susie. 
no, we're not going to do that on stream. I think that would probably violate a term of service somewhere. Let's see. I did try playing Aztec, but the controls I could not figure out. So some of these games, they don't, they're expecting an Apple II keyboard. And so when you try playing it with a regular keyboard, it does not, uh, it does not bode well. So let's see what else we got here. There's another strip poker, Mar Marlena and Candy with an I. Candy. Uh, let's see. Karatika. Let's see if we can play Karatika. That was a classic. Jordan Michener, I think, was the programmer on that. Jordan Michener. All right. Karatika. Click to begin. Click. Let's see if I can get sound back for this. This day, this game does have sound. I should probably have headphones if I am going to play a game with sound. If I can get my headphones to un untweak. All right. We'll see. We will see. Come on. Let's go. There we go. And full screen. All right, Broderbund. Let's see if there's music. Game by Jordan Michener. I don't hear music. Karataka. Dun 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 dun. All right. High atop a cliff, guarded by an army of fierce warriors, stands the fortress of the evil warlord Akuma. Deep in the darkest dungeon of the castle, Akuma gloats over his lovely captive, the Princess Mariko. You are one trained in the way of karate, a karateka. Alone and unarmed, you must defeat Akuma and rescue the beautiful Mariko. Put fear and self-concern behind you. Focus your will on your objective. Accepting death as a possibility, this is the way of the karateka. All right, let's do it. Um, now, if we got some sound. How does that sound? I'm, I'm looking at my desktop audio and it's just pegged. Like it's... Uh, sending her to her room. There she goes. How does that sound? Um, can you hear the game? What I'm seeing on my volume meters here is it's just peg. Let's do that. Okay. Uh oh. What's my command here? Back up. Okay. Uh. Okay, beat his ass. Beat his ass. Beat his ass. I don't know. What, I'm just hitting keys. Boom, boom. Take him down. All right, can you hear that? Hmm. I hear occasional effects. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at it. And it just looks like it's putting in feedback, you know, feedback sounds. Uh-oh, did we restart? Spacebar. All right, something's wrong with this game. <laughs> so, we're going to quit that. And we're going to find another game. Like I said, I'm just going to play these games quickly and blast through them because not all of them are going to work. And so as soon as they get wonky we'll try something else what do we got here spy hunter i think i remember spy hunter let's try it valley midway spy hunter um okay this one doesn't look like it's gonna work but we'll try it anyway okay Loading everything up. And we'll go full screen as soon as it's ready to go. Let's 
soon as it's ready to go. Alright. And I think we got nothing. <laughs> Alright. Like I said, they're not all going to be winners, guys. <laughs> okay, here's Strip Blackjack. That's a winner. Um, let's see. Strip Poker with David and Tony. We're definitely uh, <laughs> getting into the, uh, into the weeds with the Strip games here. Uh, let's see. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I remember that one. That was an Infocom game. Ultima 4 construction set. Nice. I remember doing that with Ultima 3 and tweaking the game and making my own little cities and stuff like that. That was kind of fun, actually, back in the day. Uh, what do we got here? Archon, computer baseball, defender, pinball construction set. Hmm. Pac-Man. Oh, this has to be horrible. Let's see. Uh... Swashbuckler, I remember that one. What do we got here? Apple II Library Games, Soft Porn. I think it's a text-based porn game. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, let's see. Oh, I remember. Zaxxon. Let's try Zaxxon. Zaxxon Zaxoff. By Sega. This one, I think, also requires a joystick, something that nobody has used in years. <laughs> they all have game pads now. All right. Let's see. Maybe I can use the, con the keyboard to control this. Was it A and Z was up and down before? And I think uh, A and Z and left and right. What was the left and right? A and Z and K and L, maybe? Or, hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. I just start banging on things. That's that's how I learned the controls. Just bang on it. Let's see what we got here. There we go. I hope that's not making too much noise. Okay, here we go. Oops. All right. One. Oh, I just hit the space bar. Uh oh. Uh oh. How do I control it? How do I control it? Oh, shite. I can't control it. Can't control it. I'm banging on keys. Well, nothing's killed me yet. Uh, arrow keys don't work. All right. Whoop. Okay, I must have hit the escape key. <laughs> I'm just starting to drum across the keyboard. All right, well, that's Zaxxon. Let's see. What else we got? Sometimes this gets locked up. We have to just start again. There we go. Uh, let's do that. And this. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Mario Brothers, Pac-Man, Castle Wolfenstein. I wonder if I can... Play Castle Wolfenstein. I know I can play Galaxian. I think I'm pretty sure I can play Galaxian. No, I think that one had a joystick as well. If it has a joystick, there's no equivalent on the keyboard for controlling the game, so it's kind of a bummer. We'll try Galaxian after this. W A S M. What does that mean? All right, so that's loading up. Let's see what we got. Ah, uh, the days of joysticks. Yeah, I had one from... It wasn't Texas Instruments. It was something in Texas, and it was a big block, and it had two big clicky buttons on it. And uh, the joystick itself was kind of like the joysticks that you see on um, on drones now. You know, it's just the, 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 the gimbal and the little stick that comes up and everything. That's what it was like. And it had a big ribbon cable that went and plugged into the back of the, the apple. Ah, yes. <laughs> and that cable will, of course, get yanked on and messed up and have to replace it. And ugh, Back in the day. All right, let's see. Initializing. Okay. 
I forgot what game this is. Oh, Castle Wolfenstein. <laughs> okay. There we go. 1981. This game came out. Jeez. And it's still being made today. They've got a whole bunch of Castle Wolfenstein games. Uh, it's one of the first 3D shooters, too, by the way. Predated Doom. Don't know if you knew that. Uh, okay, and it doesn't look like it's going to do anything. Awesome. Let's go back. <laughs> Where is it? Galaxian. Ooh. Click. Let's launch Galaxian. Yeah. Who did this? Who published this? Uh, it does oh Atari Soft? Okay. All right. Let's hope this one works. I think I can use arrow keys and a space bar. That would be nice. All right. We're loading the binary. What's funny is this thing's loading like 14 megabytes, 16 megabytes. These games weren't that big. They were. 16K. <laughs> I mean, those, these were tiny games. All right. Launching emulator. Let's go. Do, 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 do. 1983. This game came out. Okay, come on. There we go. All right. U.S. import. All right. Atari Soft presents Galaxian. Created by... Cracked. Oh, yes, the crack screens. The Association of French Crackers. All right, let's see. Okay, here we go. Option keys. S toggles the sound. One or two. One or two players. J or K. Joystick or keyboard. Okay, good. So we're going to go... Um, keyboard selected. Yay. Sound on. Yay. One player. Okay, great. Let's go. I have to figure out what the keys are, though. There we go. I hope that's not too loud. Let me know if the sound's too loud on the stream there. Ah. No, you don't. There we go. Ah. Not too loud? Good, good, good. It's kind of loud in my headphones, that's why I was saying. I don't want to... I don't want to clobber you guys with sound here. Ah! No! Good. Alright, let's clear this bad boy. There we go. Alright. Let's get through the grunts. See, this game played pretty good. Oh, and I died. This game played pretty good back in the day, I remember. It looks good to, you know, it still looks pretty... Ah, dang it. Still looks pretty good today. Game over. Game over. Do that again. Yeah, it had nice colors and stuff. I, I killed that guy. Come on. I killed that guy. Easily. Come on. Come on. Got him. Got him. That guy at the top. Ah! <laughs> Alright. It has a momentum. You can't really... Uh... Come on. Oh, BS. Come on. Game over. Alright, so that's Galaxian. Not bad. Not bad. Let's try something else. We got two thousand games to choose from. Why not? Let's try Frogger. I played this one the other day. This one does work. Oh, there's Lemonade Stand. We'll do that one a little bit too. That's the one that I actually typed in and and ran. 
God. Imagine asking a 12-year-old kid today, here's four pages of code. Type this in and maybe you'll get a game at the end of that. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Oh, God. They'd be like, whatever, old man. <laughs> when I go download something on my phone, <laughs> I am Groot. Uh, here we go. Let's play Fraga. Fraga. Broken by the Nibbler. Another crack screen. I love these things. All right. Redefine key. Type in the up key. Up, down, right, left. Okay. Got my arrow keys done. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Oh, I was supposed to get that thing, wasn't I? Oh, come on. You have to be pixel perfect on this thing? Jeez. Whoops. Ah, come on. Alright, we're going to get one of these damn things. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to get that bug. Here we go. <sighs> I'm so lame. Alright, let's get one of these things. Here. There. Jeez. Jeez. Alright, let's let this car go. Ah, oh, come on. Again. Pixel boned here. Okay. Let's go here. Oh, come <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this over and over and over. All right. Let's blip, 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 blip. Across this road again. Going down the only road I've ever known. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go into this one here. Now. There we go. See, so I just go like a, a smidgen after I would normally go. And that's what gets me in there. Okay. Uh-oh. Hurry. Ah. And now. All right, let's see if we can get those last two over there. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Last one. Oh, gosh. We got to go down. Yes. Blip, 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 blip. That is Frogger. Blip, 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 blip. 
Uh, this was considered high quality gaming back in the day. All right, let's try something different. And again, I'm just I'm just sampling these, so you know, don't expect me to play any game for longer than three or four minutes. That's probably as much as I can stand. Let's try the lemonade stand. This was a classic. I just remembered this was like one of the first programs I ever typed in. All right, here we go. I learned everything I know about business from the lemonade stand game, which is not that bad. <laughs> not not that much about business, I guess. All right, let's see what we got here. Alright, while that's doing that. Oops. Put this over here. Whoa. With music. Copyright 1979, Apple Computer. My gosh, eliminated five cents. Yes, look at those epic graphics. All right, welcome to Lemonsville, California. In the small town, you're in charge of running your own lemonade stand. You can compete with as many other people as you wish, but how much profit you make is up to you. The other stands have to head out. Hey, well, thanks for, for going down memory lane with me here, and I appreciate uh, you follow as well, so thank you for that. Have a good rest of your day, and uh, I'll probably be streaming later on tonight, and uh, perhaps some tomorrow as well. So, um, you know, since you hit the follow button, see you next time I stream. Have a good day. Let's see, are you starting a new game, yes or no? Type your answer and hit return, yes. How many people are you playing? Just one. Okay. Here we go. Manage your lemonade stand. You'll need to make these decisions every day. How many glasses of lemonade to make? Only one batch is made each morning. How many advertising signs to make? The signs cost 15 cents each. And what price to charge for each glass? You'll begin with $2 in cash. Because your mother gave you some sugar, your cost to make lemonade is 2 cents a glass. This may change in the future. All right, so let's say I got $2. It's 2 cents a glass. And advertising is 15 cents. All right, thanks for stopping by, Jacob. Appreciate it. All right, let's go. Uh, what is this? Your expenses are the sum of the cost of the lemonade and the cost of the signs. Your profits are the difference between the income from sales and your expenses. The number of glasses you sell each day depends on the price you charge and on the number of advertising signs you use. Keep track of your assets because you can't spend more money than you have. Okay. And here's our weather report. It's going to be sunny, so that means we'll sell a lot of lemonade. All right. Okay. Gas is two dollars. How many of glasses of lemonade do you wish to make? Now it's two cents a glass. So I'm thinking, if it's two cents a glass, let's make let's make fifty. So a dollar's worth. And how many advertising signs do you want to make? Let's make hmm four. And what price in cents do you wish to charge for lemonade? All right, so if it costs me two cents a glass to make, make whoops, I'm going to make 50 of them. Let's go, let's go five cents. And would you like to change anything? No. Here's our financial report. All right, day one, we sold 50 glasses at five cents a glass, four signs made, so my income is two fifty. My expenses was one sixty. I made ninety cents in profit. I have two dollars and ninety cents in assets. Okay. So we can get more aggressive, I think. Let's press space to continue. What's our weather report? Okay, it's going to be cloudy, so let's not go so nuts. So it's a cloudy day. Probably won't sell as much lemonade. How many glasses do you wish to make? Let's not make that many. Let's make fifteen glasses. It's a two, two cents a piece, so it's 30 cents, okay. How many advertising signs do you want to make? Let's make one. And what price do you want to charge for lemonade? Let's make that, again, five cents, I guess. I like to change anything? No, let's see what we did. Oh, see, thunderstorms. Probably not selling anything. 
I'm singing in the rain. Alright, let's see. Day two didn't sell anything. I should have just stayed in stayed inside. Okay. Fifteen glasses made, one sign made. We sold nothing. Press space to continue, escape to end. Okay. Bad day. Now it's sunny. Now let's go nuts. Alright. So let's see what we got here. How many glasses of lemonade do you wish to make? Okay, we did this before uh, and did well. So let's do... On day three, the cost of lemonade is four cents. Your mother quit giving you free sugar. Ah. Okay. That's good to know because I was going to try to price it accordingly. But let's do this. How many glasses do you wish to make? Um... Let's see, at four cents a glass. Huh. What's fifty cents or fifty times four cents? <laughs> uh that's two dollars, I think. Um Yeah, let's go fifty again. And how many advertising signs do you want to make? Let's go for three. And what price and cents do you want to charge for lemonade? Let's go for a profit. Um, I'm thinking it's a sunny day. So let's go for 15 cents and see what happens. Do I change anything? No. Go. All right. Okay, okay. There we go. 23 glasses sold at 15 cents a glass. We made 50 glasses, though, so we didn't really get half of them. But uh, three signs made. My expenses were two forty-five. My income three forty-five. I made a profit of a dollar, and I have total assets of three forty-five. Okay, let's have another sunny day. Nope, cloudy. And I'm thinking, all right, let's see. Day four, the cost of lemonade is four cents. There's a fifty percent chance of light rain, and the weather is cooler today. Uh, how many glasses of lemonade do you wish to make? You know, um, n none. <laughs> to tell you the truth, stay inside. How many advertising signs? None. What price? None. Would you like to change anything? No. I'm just staying inside, play video games. Okay, so it's a wash. There you go. Didn't lose any money though. Hot and dry. Nice. All right, so let's go nuts on this. Hot and dry. How many glasses do you wish to make? Um, okay, so a heat wave is predicted for today. Nice. All right, cost is four cents. So how many glasses do you want to make? Let's do another 50. How many advertising signs? Let's go three again. And what price do you want to charge for lemonade? I think we can get away with 15 cents. Want to change anything? No. Look at that. We did pretty good. 47 out of 50 glasses sold at 15 cents a glass. Gave me a, a $7.05 of income. 2.45 in, in expenses. Not bad. Made 4 bucks and 60 cents in profit. Had a lot of assets now. Okay. Cloudy again. Let's see what the weather forecast is. Day six, cost of lemonade is four cents. There's a 40% chance of light rain, and the weather is cooler today. How many glasses of lemonade do you want to make? You know, I'm, I'm going to make five glasses, because I don't think you're going to sell. How many advertising signs do you want to make? One. And then what price and cents do you want to charge for the lemonade? Uh, let's see. Hmm. I want to say 10. Let's try that. You want to change anything? No. Five glasses sold. Five glasses made. Got 50 cents of income on 35 cents of expenses. There you go. Made 15 cents profit on a cloudy day. Not bad. Space to continue. Ah, here we go. Now it's time to go... All right, hot and dry. Let's do something good here. How many glasses of lemonade do you wish to make? I think I can make a hundred. Oh wait, cost of lemonade is five cents. The price of lemonade mix just went up. Okay. Still, we're gonna go for a hundred glasses at five cents each. That's five bucks. How many advertising signs at fifteen cents each do you want to make? We're gonna make four. And what price do you want to charge for lemonade? I think we can get away with. Um, 
want to go for 20 cents? Think we can do 20 cents times, a, you know, sell 100 of them at 20 cents each? Let's do it. It's hot and dry. Come on. 20 cents. Want to change anything? No. Let's rake in some bucks. Ooh. 27 glasses. Oh, ooh. Okay, so I lost 20 cents today. I was a little greedy. <laughs> Should have charged less. Let's see. All right, sunny day. Let's <laughs> learn from our mistakes. All right, let's see. How many glasses of lemonade do you wish to make on a sunny day? Uh, all right, so I'm going to do, again, 100 glasses. How many advertising signs do you want to make? I'm going to make three. And what price in cents do you wish to charge for lemonade? We're going to go for 10 cents. Want to change anything? No. Well, okay, we lost money again. 53 glasses sold at 10 cents a glass. 100 glasses made, 3 signs made. Well, okay. <laughs> we learned something. All right, another sunny day. Let's do this. How many glasses do you want to make? Let's make 50. How many advertising signs do you want to make? Let's make two. And what price and cents do you want to charge for lemonade? I think we'll charge 10 again. I don't like to go down too low. Want to change anything? No. 48 glasses sold. We made $2 profit. Okay. Okay. I can live with that. Let's see. Here we go. Hot and dry. Let's try to sell 100 now. Let's try to sell all 100 of them here. Okay, heat wave predicted for today. I have $9.85 in assets. Cost of lemonade is $5. So let's make 100 glasses of lemonade. How many advertising signs? I'm going to do four. And what price do you want to charge for lemonade? Let's go 10 cents and see if we can't. Let's see. 10 cents. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to charge for lemonade? Let's go 10 cents. Do you want to change anything? No. Let's sell all 100. Yes, 100 glasses sold. We made 440 in profits. Nice. 10 bucks income, 560 in expenses. That's good. And another hot and dry day. Let's rock and roll it. Okay. Heat wave. Okay, so. Cost of lemonade is five cents a glass. Uh, let's see. How many glasses do you want to make? So let's see if we can get really rich here. Um, so let's go for 200 glasses. How many signs do you want to make? Let's do four again. Actually, four. What price in cents do you wish to charge for the lemonade? Let's go 10 cents again and see if we can get all these sold. You want to change anything? No. 111 glasses. <laughs> so, okay. Well, we still made some money. 50 cents. That's all right. I dig it. Another hot and dry. Okay, let's try to rock this one out. I think if we did this, how many glasses do you want to make? Let's go 200. All right. How many advertising signs? Let's go six. And what price in cents do you want to charge for the lemonade? I'm going to say ten cents. Change anything? No. Sold 117 glasses. Made 80 cents in profit. Boo. All right. All right. Well, that's a lemonade stand, as you can see. Addicting. <laughs> it's a fun game. What are you going to do? You know, it's fun. All right. Let's see what else we got. Ghostbusters, Castle of Star Wars, Pac-Man. Uh, Load Runner, Tron. Let's see. I don't know what I want to play here. Alice in Wonderland. We played Frogger already. Load Runner. I wonder if I can play Load Runner. I think that one needed a, a joystick to play, but let's try it. Let's try it just for... Just for grins. Get our game metadata downloaded here. Oh, 
All right, got our binary here. What else we got? Fire it up. Load runner. Let's go. There we are. Okay. Okay, Broder Run Software presents Load Runner by Doug Smith. This is back when games were made by one person. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, gosh. Uh-oh. Okay, I hit a button. Um... Shit. What are the control... Oh, oh, what are the control controls? Ah. Okay, I think it's I, J, K, and M. But I need to know what the dig command is. Is that a space? Let's see. Go. No, it's not. Oh, shit. It's not space. What's the dig? Oh, crap. Maybe it's Z? Uh, all right, I gotta get my... Get my shit together here. Alright, let's get up here and try to figure this out. Oh, come on. What's the command for digging? Gotta be able to dig a hole here. What's the command? Sheet. Okay, there's the ladder getting out of here. Come on, we need to know what the command is to dig a hole. Hmm. That's it. What is it? Oh, okay. No! Okay. O. I, J, K, M is the up, down, left, right, and O is a really inconvenient dig function. Okay. How did I do that? Oh, I guess it doesn't let you escape. All right. Oh, no, you don't. Uh, okay. So, oh, it digs to your right. Maybe you will dig to my left? Let's see. Yes. U and O. Okay. Jeez. Get over here. Woo! Run. What's up? We're going up here. Oh, wait, we should get that box. Okay, we're going to get these two boxes. 
Go, 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 go. And... Woohoo! Alright, so that's Load Runner. And I keep playing, but it hurts my hand <laughs> to play this game. Alright. So, Load Runner. What else we got? There's Galaxian. We played that. Let's see. Hard Hat and Mac. I think that was a copycat of, uh, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Donkey Kong, I want to say. Let's see. Who made this? Electronic Arts. Hard Hat and Mac. That was the thing, is Apple never got any licenses for games, so they would always have to make these cheapo games like uh, Cannonball Run, or no, Cannonball something was a, a copy of Donkey Kong, and it was always, you know, they'd have to name it something else, but the gameplay was essentially the same. It's so lame. Then came ColecoVision, and they just licensed stuff. <laughs> you know? All right, we'll go full screen once this comes up. And this will probably be the last game we try. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the retro stream today. There we go. Look at that. Screen full of noise. Okay. Vandal, Mac, OSHA. Cracked by Mr. Crackman. All right. Copyright 1983 by Michael Abbott. Okay. Let's see if I can figure this out. Oh, boy. Nope. Okay. Oops. Okay. Okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Nope. I think if I get that little uh, jackhammer thing, I can attack people. Oops. All right, hard hat Mac. Last chance. No. Oops. Can't jump through those people. Kill people now. Let's go. Come on. Or not. I thought I could kill those guys. Alright, well that's hard hat back. <laughs> okay. Well that's it for my stream today. Um, hope you enjoyed the, the retro look and feel of my Apple games here. Let me turn that down now and mute my desktop. Oh, you can see some of the other levels. That's kind of cool. That was a pretty neat game back in the day, I think I recall it. Um, okay, so that's it for me today. Uh, I'll go back to full screen. Thank you for joining the stream and watching, and I appreciate the follows uh, to those that did follow. Let me get your names up here. Uh, yeah, Sean Butts and Jacob, thank you for the follows today. I appreciate that. And I hope you, you come back and see me on another stream sometime. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.